Hello everyone, welcome to Unlucky Part 13 of Castlevania Symphony of the Night. In today's episode, we're going to trek through the clock tower as well as the library. So stay tuned for that, that's going to be interesting. I hope. Get those jacko bones out of my face! The only jackos I like are jack-o'-lanterns and jacko-valentine from Guilty Gear. I've only really played two of those games. <laughs> the first one from 1998 and the game called Zer Revelations or whatever it's called. Not the biggest fan of that series, but I do like the wacktastic nature of it, and I kind of want to play more of those games. It's Arc System Works. They usually do a good job with 2D fighting games, especially Dragon Ball Fighters or Fighter Z, however you want to pronounce that. That game is freaking fantastic. And let's not forget River City Girls 1 and 2, which I think was made by Arc System Works and published by Way Forward, or maybe it was made by Way Forward and published by Arc System Works. Either one of the two. Okay, no, so Way Forward actually made those two games and Arc Systems published it. Never mind. You know what? Still two good games with Arc System Works name on it. I'll give them that. But um, yeah, I don't know where I was going with that whole conversation. It's almost like I'm running out of things to say. So let's talk about this year, 2024, and how I'm trying to make a comeback. Trying to be consistent with the uploads, trying to stay out of drama, as much as I can at least. Because, let's face it, it's YouTube. There's always going to be drama and bullshit. Oh! <laughs> I almost outran that gem. But yeah, drama on the internet, never good for the health. That's why I quit Twitter. <laughs> I haven't used Twitter in like three years, honestly. You just don't need that shit in your life. Twitter is crap. <laughs> or X, as it's called now. Eh. Anyway, I just got the Dragon Helm. It says it lowers defense because it frightens enemies, but I'm not sure if it lowers my defense or the enemy's defense. The wording is kind of vague on that part. I'm guessing it means the enemy's defense is lowered, so I'm just going to take the vague wording as gospel. The Golden Medusas make a return, so equip the Mere Kiras. The cogs from the first playthrough of the Clock Tower make a return, and they work pretty much the same here. You have to hit the gears until you hear a click, and then move on to the next gear. Oh, except this time it's harder, because instead of Harpies, you have Hooded Knights, who are much more aggressive on the attack. Ah, oh, yeah. These guys are rough. So you have to deal with these guys, as well as the Golden Medusas, as well as the Cogs. All that while trying not to die. Which is kind of hard to do, because these guys barely do double digits of damage. Sometimes the gears feel like not clicking. Jeez, how many hits was that? Was that 10? At least? That one went down in three or so hits. But yeah, the gears, they're completely random. You don't have to worry about the Cloak Knights returning or respawning, it's really just the Medusa heads that are the main pain here. Alright, that's you gone. I really wish I had the axe still. And there's probably three more Cloak Knights down there. Yep, I was right. The wall to my immediate left is a secret room. I'll be sure to go in there as soon as I deal with the gears.
thank you mist form. Now let's see what's up here. Okay, we got the diamond which we can sell to the librarian, the life apple, and the sunstone. The sunstone increases all stats after sunrise, which would be 6 a.m. The direct opposite of the moonstone, of course. Now for that secret room. This secret room does have a couple of goodies that you can't pass up. And the good thing is that there are no Fleeman Riders like in the original version of this room. Heart max up. That's always good to get because that means more sub weapon usage. This room is pretty much the same as it was on the previous playthrough, even down to the Cloak Knight. And it looks like I picked up a Flamberg from the Cloak Knight. I never really use this weapon to be honest, mostly because it's outdated compared to all the other weapons I currently have. Here are the Bomb Knights. They are hindered by low ceilings. So they throw their grenades and it just explodes on contact with a wall or a ceiling. <laughs> That's it. And they die in one to three hits, so they're not that tough. They also make funny death noises too. This room has a few spiky drilling chandeliers that drop down from time to time. You gotta watch out for those, because they do a ton of damage. And getting spiked is never good for you. Now, I don't think there's anything over here. I'm just clearing out the map, basically. This is another one of those big rooms that count as multiple rooms. So I may have to explore the pieces of map I missed off screen. At least we're getting close to the next boss that has one of Vlad's pieces. It's the Dark Wing Bat. No, Disney, you can't copyright. It's a bat, not a duck. I don't think I've ever beaten Dark Wing Duck on the NES. That's a game I like to try out. Feels like Mega Man. Oh, makes sense because it's Capcom, but it's one for one kind of like a Mega Man game. Here's the boss in question with pretty odd 2D physics on the wings. That does not look good. <laughs> that is the only effect in this game that has not aged the best. But the Dark Wing Bat is pretty easy to take down as it's already dead. I think I'm way too powerful for this game. I, I just need to take all my shit off. <laughs> That's the problem here. But after defeating the Bat, we get the Ring of Vlad. Just one more relic to go. And we have to fight Death himself for that relic. This room leads you back to the Inverted Castle Keep, which is the first area from once you've entered the Inverted Castle. So instead of doing this, we're going to go back the way we came. With all the Bomb Knights, of course. With all the Bomb Knights. But in all actuality, I forgot an item that's in here. There she is, the Moon Rod. Apparently a Sailor Moon reference, this weapon is alright. I much rather prefer the speed of the Holy Rod, but the Moon Rod does just fine. In the name of the Moon, I'll beat you over the head with this thing. That's how the line went, right? Right? Yeah? Before I mentioned that I like 90s anime, Sailor Moon was not one of those 90s anime that I cared for. <laughs> Most of the time, the concept just flew over my head, and I found the characters annoying for the most part. Except for Lita. Jupiter. Sailor Jupiter. I, I liked her. Everything else about that show, I found a complete waste of time. You may even say I think that show is overrated. Which, yes, I do. Sailor Moon is indeed overrated. You can fight me on that. <laughs> Hell, I even think Dragon Ball Z in some regards is overrated. But I still like Dragon Ball Z. I, I watch that over Sailor Moon any day. But we're getting off topic. 
or are we? Because one of the Japanese voice actors in this game voiced the character in Sailor Moon. Ah, it all connects. It all connects. But here we're finally going to go into the long library just to see what's up over there. And it's one big old Wizard of Oz reference. I didn't know Wizard of Oz was rooted in horror, but okay then. Wait, there was that sequel that came out in the 80s, right? From what I've heard, that was a terrifying, but I haven't seen it, so... Can't know for sure. Here's where the madness begins, with the first couple of enemies being the... Oh, not the shmoo. The shmoo is where you can get the chrysogram. You can spend five hours of your day just trying to get the damn lucky sword, or you can spend five minutes of your time getting the damn sword. It depends on how lucky you really are, and how much luck potions you gulp down. But that's besides the point, I'll show that in the next part. Which is gonna be more of an extra part. The other enemies that are references to Oz is the lion, which is um not as cowardly as it lets on. I mean, it does back away when you face it, but it does strike at least, so not so cowardly lion. Another enemy that passed by is the scarecrow, which Konami had to censor a bit by changing the blood from red to green. As gory as this game could get, the scarecrows possibly would have raised the age rating up by being gorier. <laughs> And last but not least is the Tim Man, which looks more like a medieval R2-D2 with an axe. Those enemies have tough defense against swords, but not against knuckles. But they're hard to get to because you have to be so close to them. So I'm going to equip my knuckle dusters for those Tim Men. Oh, there's nothing here? Wow, that's a tease. Here they are. These enemies are rough. It takes one good punch with Knuckles, but as you can see, their attacks are far-reaching. So you may be better off just avoiding those enemies completely. There we go. Resist everything. All the things. Most of the things. Something. How about nothing at all? Nothing at all. I just like the shmoo. Give me something! I just want my chrysogram. Now, I don't normally hunt down the chrysogram in a standard playthrough of this game, but... I just want to show it off. I, I want to show it off. And just to give you an idea of how insanely broken the sword is. Here's this room again, except the more dangerous Oz enemies are present. Got some health back from that one? Yes, even the Tim Men have souls, apparently. I'm surprised there's no Dorothy or Toto enemy in this section. I'm guessing that's what the Shmoos are in this section? I, I don't even know what a Shmoo is. They just drop the Chrysogrim on a good day, that's all I know those enemies for. Here's the battle lair. The power increases with gameplay. At least that's what it says in the bio. I think the sword is okay, but I don't equip it. It's very much situational for me. I have to be careful here because the Tin Man can do a lot of damage. I'm not worried about the Scarecrows and the Lions because they're not that threatening. It's really the Tin Men that hurt. It's the goddamn axes. That's what's killing me. That's one way to do it. I just need more magic so I can do my soul steal again. Soul steal. 
That's what you get for camping out on the ledge, you bitch. That should be it for the 10 men on this lower level. Still got the top level to attend to. Oh no, there is another one. Ah, I hate these. Lunch A, that's a new one. I don't even know what that's supposed to be. <laughs> I'm guessing it's supposed to be a Subway sandwich or a McDonald's burger. Whatever it is, it only fills up a portion of your health. So, not that useful. So we got one more bit of long library to explore before I end the part. And it's the location where the librarian was originally. Let's see if he's still there. Oh, he's not. Well, she. <laughs> he's not here. But you can fly up the shaft where the librarian would be sitting on top of. And you can gain access to this part of the map. Which is just a ton of more enemies. Oh, we got another javelin. Something I'm not going to use. Anyway, that's going to be the end of the part. The next episode, I'm going to grind out for Chrysogram. It's going to be interesting, and hopefully that shit does not take too long. Like and subscribe and all that good YouTube stuff, and I will see you later.